What is up, everybody? Smoking Tire Podcast, week of March 25th. Welcome to the show. Before we get into it, we're brought to you this episode by the Brio Beardscape. You know, just about every guy I know owns a trimmer, a battery-operated or plug-in buzzer that trims your hair, and just about every guy has had a bad experience with a crappy trimmer. I know I have. I used to think you would buy these things at the drugstore. You should not. Uh, either the blades get dull really fast, start pulling hairs, or they're loud, the motor dies, or, I mean, the battery stops holding charge. Pick pick your death for the buzzer. You feel me? And if that sounds familiar, it's time to upgrade to the Brio Beardscape. I've been using the Beardscape for, like, a year and uh, a quarter, and I just charged it for the second time. So it's like it's like a 16-month charge if you use it once a week like I do, which is pr- pretty awesome. Uh, it's light. It's easy to carry. It comes in a really nice little pouch that holds uh, the variable height uh, blades. And it has a ceramic blade, so it doesn't get rusty or corroded uh, as quickly as as your normal stainless steel blades do, and you don't have to oil it as often. Uh, It's just, it's got a high horsepower motor. I love the Brio Beardscape. I use it all the time. I'm not even kidding. Uh, Go to Brio for life. That's Brio, the number four, life.com, and use code SMOKING at checkout, and I have the best price for you, my friends. Brio for life.com. Use code SMOKING at checkout for the best price on the Brio Beardscape. We're also brought to you this episode by Migliore. Migliore luxury car care products. Migliore is known for making the best of the best when it comes to car care. The product line is handmade and poured right here in the USA in Connecticut. My home state, folks. I live in Cali, but my parents live in Connecticut. So mad respect to Connecticut and products made there. Migliore's Strata Coating is a ceramic coating treatment you can easily apply yourself. It adds a ton of gloss, lasts over a year, and keeps your car looking great for longer in between washes. It's extremely hydrophobic, meaning water just sheets right off it, makes maintenance so much easier. Just a quick hose down, you're good to go, especially out here in Cali, where the cars don't really get dirty so much as they just get, like, dusty. It's great for that. Like, on the East Coast, you drive in the rain and stuff, like, sticks to your car, but here on the West Coast, it's just dust. You just hose it right off with the Migliori Strata coating, and then, boom, you're golden. Strata Coating has over 100 positive reviews on Amazon. Check those out. Spring is right around the corner. In fact, it's here. It's after the first day of spring now. Use code TST at checkout when you go to migliorewax.com. I'm going to spell it for you. M-I-G-L-I-O-R-E wax.com. M-I-G-L-I-O-R-E wax.com. 10% off their products. And here we go. It's the show. Uh, On this episode, we are taking a hard left away from cars. Um, Some of you guys like the episodes where we don't talk about cars, uh, although we actually do talk about some cars in this episode. Uh, My man, Rich Fricky, is in studio. Rich is uh, is the head uh, contractor uh, from Litcha Construction uh, on my Westside Collector Car Storage Project. And, like, so many of you asked me questions about the construction and, like, what's really involved in building this building or, like, people think they might want to build their own building. Buildings. And so uh, this is what it's going to be about. Um, <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about car storage, uh, Westside Collector Car Storage, and uh, what it has taken to design and construct um, this facility. So I hope you guys find this interesting. Uh, Rich Fricky on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Ah, good afternoon, <clears throat> everybody in the his house. What's up? It's Smoking Tire Podcast. It's a Tuesday for those of you who care, and I'm in the middle of a panic attack running around the city, 18 things to do, only home two days this week, so got to pack it all in, really cram that schedule as tight as it goes, And uh, but it's very exciting. On the home front, the building is starting to look like a building. West Side Collector Car Storage is almost, it's not a hole in the ground anymore. It's an enclosed underground bunker with bricks being laid on top of it. And every time I talk about it or post uh, about it uh, on Instagram or whatever, uh, pictures of construction, they people get excited and want to talk more about construction. So today, fuck it, we're doing construction. My man Rich in the house. How you doing? Rich, it's now, it occurs to me that I've never spoken your last name to your face. 
Yeah, Frick, it's, it's, Fricka, Fricky. Which is it? Frick E. It's Frick E. Yeah, so fricky. I had it right, yeah, but never fricky. to your face, because someone said Fricka the other day, and I was like, Oh no, I get it wrong. I get it's it. Like everyone easy. gets it wrong. Get, a little closer, get closer to the mic. Yeah, bring okay, the mic yeah, closer yeah. to you. Yeah. Whatever Either works. Yeah. All right. How's that? You're better. Beautiful. Today right, yeah. you're a professional radio broadcaster. Yeah. Normally I'm just a builder. Normally you just build <laughs> shit. <laughs> so. Um, all right, where the fuck? Where do we start? We're making, we're building a building. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Putting been quite a in. process. Yeah, I know. It's it's the first of its kind. You, uh, which is so weird to say because it's like it is, but it's not. I mean, it's no one, people have built parking garages before, and people have built parking garages cooler than this one before. That one in Miami comes to mind. The crazy Herzog and Demeron. You know, uh, the thing that's in the background of every USA crime show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there's there's a lot of parking structures. There's, uh, there's indoor parking structures. There's stackers. But um, right now, your building's writing the code for an indoor quad stacking mm. parking structure. Say it. First in- of a kind. Yeah. So here's what's crazy about this. Like, I uh, actually, Tim, it's good that Timmy's here because Tim... Uh, originally helped inspire me to start the project to begin with, which was the year 2013. That Tim was like, dude, you should totally <laughs> fucking fix this parking situation that's happening in LA right now. Like, every no one can find parking for this shit. Like, we should fix this. Yeah, yeah. You know, parking is a premium around here, so it's, it's a great concept. And, you know, what you guys are, are thinking about doing here, it's, uh, I mean, this this part of town, it's uh, brilliant. It's amazing it's brilliant. how, like, how little space there is left. Like, there, there just isn't. It's like, it sucks. No one, you know, I've, I keep thinking of that fucking Counting Crows song, you know, like, <laughs> it's actually a, a cover. I forget who sang it originally, but it's like, pave paradise and put up a parking <laughs> yeah. lot. But, like... We didn't pay paradise. We tore down an ugly building and we're putting up a better looking one. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the thing is, for those who, who don't live in L.A. and we talk about this a lot, like it's a very unique place. The car culture is very heavy. The public transportation system is very terrible. So you really need a car. And if you're a car enthusiast, um, if you have any kind of resources at all, you realize very quickly in this town that you need to have a sports car and then an everyday car, and rarely the two shall cross. You know, your needs every day dealing with traffic and bullshit in your life, and then your weekend escape are typically not the same vehicle. Yeah, no, they're not. And uh, I mean, who also? You're a car guy, by the I, way. I'm a car guy. Yeah. I, I've I've got a uh, I've got a Shelby Cobra, and uh, and I love cars. I love. I've got an F one fifty. A big one, uh, Lariat. It's a big one. It's a big one. All Fox shocked out, and uh, you know I'm. I like to work on cars. Uh, I like to. All for everyone I've gotten to work on this project, at least the top people, the architect, and shout out to Richard and Harris and the team at Red Architects. Her, uh, Richard's a Porsche guy. He's mm-hmm. got a Porsche. You and your pops are are Ford people. Yeah, we like Ford. Mustang people. Yeah, he's got Shelby a Corvette people. too. Yeah. Oh, does your pops yeah. have a vet? Yeah, he bought a 1980 Corvette new, and he still has it. An 80. Yeah, 1980. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Is that like a pace car one? Yeah, it. Looks like the Stingray, but it's just post Stingray. It's like the Stingray, yeah. But it ain't no motherfucking Stingray. It's not a Stingray. It's slow. It's a slow. It's a, <laughs> Does he still drive it? Does this just sit? It, it sits. Yeah, he's rebuilt it a few times, but it's it's original. Does, does, yeah. does Pops wrench? Does he uh, work yeah. on himself? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. He does? yeah, yeah, yeah. We work on everything. We're oh, just good. working on the Cobra the other day. And what? Who made? What? Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a. Re- a it's, replica, a it's a replica. Right? Yeah. yeah. Factory five. Oh, do do you like that? Are you happy with the package? Oh, oh yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, they did a great job. You know, putting that kit together. And uh, did you buy it whole or we, did you we buy bought it? it? Yeah, we bought it actually sight unseen. I hired an inspector. Uh, oh, yeah. at, in Detroit, and yeah. uh, they went out and you know, thirty gigs of photos and videos and. Uh, Probably I mean, money well spent on that It was that money well spent. That's, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you can't get out and see it yourself, I'm busy. I couldn't, uh, you know, send someone else out to look at it for you. They they go through everything, and uh, yeah, it, it checked out perfect. 351 wins are in it. And oh, it's, probably uh, a good time. Yeah, it was. It, it probably was, wants you dead. <laughs> it tries to kill me yeah. every time I drive it. Yeah. The secret, the super secret to Cobras that people who are into Cobras never, it's like, a, it's like a catch 22 <laughs> because you want that, blah, 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 yeah. you know, the co- the full Cobra effect is the death trap effect, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's no traction control. No, no, There's no. nothing. I mean, it's, it's but, your hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. No but the truth steering. is the actual, the best ones to drive are the small motor ones, the mm-hmm. 289 ones. Mm-hmm. Cause now that you've driven, you're thinking, you go, man, 
this had 275 horsepower, it would be really fun. Right, yeah, you keep it on the ground. Yeah, at 400, yeah, I'm going to die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah. <laughs> now, I limit my time in it for my own health. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, exactly. So you so uh, you guys and, uh, you know, you and your dad and, and your team and, and Rick, uh, you're, you're a super, uh, for, is he foreman superintendent? Yeah, he's What's superintendent, superintendent? So, yeah, yeah. field superintendent. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of car folks that are working on this. So I feel mm-hmm. like everybody kind of gets what we're trying to do here. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got your daily driver and you got to have a place to put your nice car and what you're doing here is perfect. I mean, call up, get it ready and... Yeah, well, in this area, you know, even if you have a really nice house or a really nice a condo or a really nice apartment or townhouse or anything, the odds of having a safe place to keep more than two cars mm-hmm. is almost zero it's right. very very small right yeah um, a secure place i mean yeah. yeah i mean and and you get the you're going to keep the things charged and uh i mean but we're limiting where it's a small area like yeah. we're, my circle is like three four miles it's mm-hmm. not a big circle mm-hmm. you live over on the east side like yeah. the northeast side right right and you guys could have a little more space a little bigger garages like a driveway a real driveway right yeah and yeah I'm, and I don't have the problem that you guys have on on the west side over yeah. here. You know where where I live. I mean, it is it's suburbia. You know, I've got right. I've got it's a long room. driveway and a two car garage. So yeah, so uh, room. Yeah, there's room. Yeah, we yeah. have no room. You don't have the room here, so. So people keep being like, dude, build the next one here, build the next one. And it's like, I could build one a hundred yards away. <laughs> like the perfect yeah. one is like you're, you're across right. the street. Yeah, you don't need to go across road. town. You need yeah. to go to the next block over. Yeah. Well, that dude's <laughs> selling across the street. Yeah, he's yeah. been, there's a guy across the street who's, he's got a body shop, 24,000 square foot. Right. And he's been, he's been tapping, <laughs> tap, hey. tap, tap. And the price has come down a couple times. But he keeps offering me suggestions of what to do with it. He goes, this would make a great man cave. <laughs> this would make a great whatever. I go, you know what it would make? A great fucking hole in the ground. <laughs> build He's like, but the buildings were built in the 50s. Good. Get them out of here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got better stuff these days. <laughs> okay. So I came to you with a uh, property, the mm-hmm. piece of dirt, 13,800 square feet and change uh, in a beautiful location. And you, uh, the architects uh, who have done a crazy amount of work jiggling things and then you and your company whose job it is to physically build the thing Mm -hmm. or oversee the building of the thing yes so you want to put as many cars as you can in this relatively small space yes what are our biggest challenges from day one Oh, well, the city of L.A. is the biggest hurdle. Right. Uh, I so mean, talk to me about what it's like to build a quote. And I'm putting dirt. I'm going to put dirty business in quotes because we're not actually building a dirty business. We're not doing body work, mechanical work or dealing with fluids. But anything automotive, as far as L.A. is concerned, is a dirty business. Yeah. You know, there's not too many things in this building that are really, um, I would say, call, you know, quote, dirty business for this building in particular. You've got, uh, I mean, you you have oil separators in your ground for any parking lot runoff. I mean, you know, cars inherently drip oil. Yeah. And in today's age, you have to trap that before it goes back into either the stormwater or the sewer. So your building has that. Uh, but other than that, you have really got yourself uh, a really clean building. It's totally green. It's but energy the ci- efficient. When you, but when you tell the city, I want to build car storage, yeah, they immediately give you kind of a scowl about the rules governing you know anything parking in general yeah, parking yeah, yeah. in cars right you know, some things you don't want to you know i mean when it comes to like the city of l you do a, a car wash and that brings into things like uh having to make sure you monitor the amount of water is used for the thing and and what kind of soaps you use mm-hmm. and what kind of stuff goes down the drain and you know so some things yeah it is it's it's a dirty business and you have to work around that and, and do what you can to design around it and make sure that one you're meeting code and two you know you're protecting the environment best you can mm. So, um, you know, this this building does account for it. The, the biggest hurdle, though, these days, it actually isn't has anything to do with the cars. It has to do with stormwater. And Are we talking about lid? Lid. Okay, so it's explain, a bad word explain what lid industry. is for, so, for those who are, don't know what it is. All right, so, so lid, it's like for dumb people. Yeah, so lid means low impact development. And, uh, and it's basically, if you disturb a certain amount of earth in L.A. now, in California, you have to treat the amount of water that rain falls onto that amount of earth and uh and it has to be clean before it goes back into our water system i.e gutters rivers etc on for to the ocean and uh your building filters every square <laughs> inch of water every square every inch, inch of water, water that including lands including the rainwater that hits the roof 
So your rainwater on your roof is so let's fall. Let's follow the trip, the path of rain. Rain yeah. falls out of the sky, lands on the roof. Where clean, does it go? Clean water falls on your roof yeah. from from the from rain. It goes down into a uh, a drainage system that uh, filters into a bioswale. What's a bioswale? A bioswale is basically a living filter. Okay. So it's it's multiple layers of sediment, rock, soil, and plants that basically filter dirty water from your roof um, and, and it filters through the multiple layers in the very bottom there's a, there's a secondary drain there's a, a French drain um, which basically collects the water at the bottom of what you would think of a pot like a big yeah. planting pot and from there it discharges out onto the really clean so LA you, gutters yeah, so you, so you, <laughs> you do actually because it's weird it's weird because I'm like a progressive person right yeah. and I you know I believe in the climate science yes. that we're seeing and like I you know I think in general it's the the onus should be put on big polluting corporations first and individuals second but that's neither here nor there. No. But so it's uh, it's weird because on the one hand like we're do we're making this building cleaner than you know what I mean yeah. like the water that hits my roof is cleaner than the water that hits the street. So yeah. you know you're ahead of the curve. Yeah. On the other hand you want to go well this is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. I mean it puts a lot of I mean you you've paid the ultimate price here. Yeah, you know, cost, in construction. It costs a lot of money it to do that. It costs a lot of money to run this process. Yeah. So, you know, you're taking what is clean roof water, filtering it, filtering it through dirt before you dump it into the gutter. You know, that's that's essentially what you've done <laughs> at, at a cost of $100,000. <laughs> so, uh, th you know, it sucks because it. I because I want to be like, yes, let's do the right thing for the planet. You know what I mean? And but at the same time, you go, I just don't understand how this has made an improvement in any fucking way. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, if you've joined the crowd. Yeah, and yeah. to any passers-by, you, nobody would know this system is going on. If you walk by the building, you basically just see that, that there's landscaping. Yeah, and yeah. That's, and, but that landscaping is actually working. Yeah, if, it's, it's if a functional it device. It's a yeah. functional item in the building. It's not just a planter. I they was used shocked to just when I went over there. Tim, the, sc scroll to the left on those pictures there, and I think there's a picture of the, the planter box. Go, Keep going, keep going, keep going. That, that, oh, one. it might be a different picture from that day, but um, but uh, yeah, I had a couple of pictures from that day. Go up the other way, and, that, and there was pictures from outside. Ah, that's where we're at. Never mind. I guess I suck. Um, but yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge planter box. Okay, so lid is the big thing. Lid is a big thing. Now we have decided that if we're gonna fit my goal of 150 cars in this property, the only way to do it is to put quad stackers over an open deck basement. Yes. So now where does you, now where does the the architect and the contractor's head go for that? Just like, oh god. Well, I mean structurally it's a challenge. I mean, you're you're talking about amazing point loads. And when I say point loads, you have basically a column that holds your four stackers of cars onto a single point on that concrete deck. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, imagine the amount of weight on one leg, one column. I actually think, isn't isn't it there? Yeah, there, there's okay, a so column. Okay, so that's a column of the underground parking structure portion, and it's an 18-inch deck. Um, at the heaviest point. And uh, for translation for people, the deck is the either the ceiling of the basement or the floor, floor of the of main, the main level. level. Yeah, 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 exactly. So that, that would be what we call the podium deck. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that basically is your platform. It's your podium that the rest of the building is going to be constructed on top of. And, and it varies in thickness, but yeah, we're 18 inches thick to be able to support the massive amount of weight of basically, essentially that is the platform for a four-story parking structure. Right. But it's only supporting one story. But it's only but supporting it's one, one story. crazy heavy story. Heavy load. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, you know, there's an engineering challenge in, in doing something like that. The amount of steel inside your building, you know, is really what we see when we build bank vaults or bomb shelters really? not that i've built a bomb shelter but uh, uh, svader said bridges bridges he yeah. said this is what a column looks like when i build a bridge you're he's absolutely right it's it's very very heavy and uh and, and that's normally what you would see at the bottom of say a four level parking structure but not even to that extent on the deck because even in a parking structure your decks are thinner because it only has to support the level of one row of cars. Oh, yeah. Versus your deck, which is supporting multiple. Right. And so it's really heavy duty. Um, there's a lot of steel in it. There's really strong concrete in it. Um, and, uh, and and you can see the finish. It just, 
I'm uh, if I must say so it came out <laughs> <laughs> really well no it, it does, does it look looks really it looks, nice. I'm, I'm very <laughs> pleased really with really good very so, smooth yeah, Tim no came down the other day it's really great. really nice yeah. Yeah. yeah it's rad and there's like there but there's a lot of so much of it is like regulation driven like yeah why can't why can't we do this one th- well the rule says this like why can't you do like everything in this place is like to an inch everything there's yeah, no, no extra space it, it's 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag you yeah. know i mean that's it's not just in regarding the steel or the concrete i mean you we've back shored this project which is um what is, uh, remind me what that is okay so it's been a while since i've heard that yeah word. yeah so um you know the, the the building normally when you do shoring we because we had to go vertically down right up against the property line on all four sides i mean we're utilizing every square inch of this piece of property normally when you do um lagging on shoring the boards that go up between mm-hmm. your steel piles that go down into the ground um the steel or the boards will go in between an i-beam and we ended up putting our boards on the back of these i-beams it's a it's an expensive uh like a difficult process but it ended up gaining us another foot huh. on each side of the building and when we're talking about dimensions that are as critical as they are in this building yeah, yeah. literally within the inch of a making foot a, probably gets you eight or nine cars well, well easy it, it, well it gets you exactly because what it does is it limits one row yeah and if you take one row of cars out along one side of the wall you eliminate all those cars yeah a row, you, you a row that's clears. five high it, you're taking right, exactly yeah, yeah you Ex- take out an entire connect four board of cars right so good. what you do at the bottom level it's your foundation affects everything going upward yeah and so some of the things we had to do here were gaining inches and uh, and we did that everywhere we could on this building. It's so it's so crazy. And then we made this ramp that is the the best ramp because yeah. anyone who's ever driven sports cars, especially in this city, ramps are the enemy. They are not designed for sports cars. This is the only ramp in history designed for sports cars. Yes, I, that may be a little hype. Well, maybe there. maybe, but uh, someone it's, it's designed for a very low spo- it's sports. It's a very car. low car. Yeah, we should really have one of those competitions where they have the slammed cars. Have you ever seen those competitions? <laughs> yes, yeah. Stands cars have getting into a parking in lot. <laughs> it would be a boring lot. Everyone could get in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wouldn't happen drive here. Down. Yeah, this venue it, sucks. It, it's a really <laughs> steep ramp, but yeah, no, we, I mean, we did mock-ups. Uh, um, your architect, Red, ended up doing a lot of mock-ups on, on paper and, and on the computer, and we did, uh, we actually made a uh, plogic making mock-ups for Z06s and, yeah. and trying to gain square footage, uh, you know, to make sure you can stack, you get another stacker in the building and... Uh, and yeah, and the, it's not just the square footage too that's designed to the nth degree. It's it's your power. It's uh, oh my god, the power. <sighs> Should we talk about? We have to, let's talk about power. Uh, if you want to. I, no, no, it's, a sore it's so. <laughs> <these days. laughs> Wait, if I'm if I'm like this, it means it's probably entertaining for everybody else. <laughs> um, so okay, so we have 400. M- you're gonna have to lead this one because uh, I'm oh, so okay. bad at the terminology. Okay. okay, what's our situation? So we have a, a 400 amp service coming into your property. It's not a lot of power for the amount of stuff you're doing within the building. Uh, it's what Edison can provide off of the power pole without a transformer. Uh, because and the problem with the transformer is that we'd have to physically put it somewhere, and because we have use no every room. inch, we have no room. You have no room. Yeah, every everything, every obstacle that comes up always rolls the ball back to yes. where will that go and the answer is always fucking nowhere <laughs> if you had another 100 square feet on your property life would be easier <laughs> yeah. it would be so much easier yeah but you don't have room for a transformer which means we're stuck with the amount of service that we could pull directly off the edison pole and uh and with the amount of power that it takes to run your lighting your air conditioning your heating your water heaters and all of which is intentionally stackers, low energy stuff all which is already designed i mean 10 years ago designing this building your building as it sits right now would be an 800 amp building uh-huh and, no matter what no matter what yeah, yeah the transformers would, going it in it would have happened you would have lost a parking stall <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and today with uh, how everything is led and green and energy efficient motors and timers on on systems um interlocks on on motors to make sure no not more than one operates at the same time uh <sighs> you uh you basically uh you know we we ended up getting right there yeah well that's sort of the, you know for those who don't understand how this works i am learning i learned it myself you have 400 amps right and they literally add up everything in your building that uses power mm-hmm. turned on at the same time 
Yeah, right? and then and well, somewhat. Yeah, they they end up taking taking it to that point, and then they they reduce it to uh, like a seventy percent usage. Yeah, so well, you're still you have an over usage at four hundred amps, but that's what the code requires. You have to. If you were to go in and say, hey, look, uh, if you add up all my stuff and all of it turned on together, I'm using 900 amps. And, yeah. and you may be close to, say, 600 amps, yeah. even though you only have a 400 amp system. They'll, they'll back it off 30% and say, this is, this is what you're using, but it's still their guideline. So, yeah, so you have to, like, play, like... Remember the movie? It's a numbers like, game. Yeah, the movie Apollo thirteen, right? When they're they got they got to turn stuff back <laughs> on exactly in the right it. order. Gary Sinise is never actually got <laughs> sick. He's in the simulator. He's going giving me what I got, what they had. If they don't have it, I don't want it. And then he's in there turning shit on yes. one at a time. And eventually, he finds an order that will support the amount of power that they have. So that's what we have to do. That's exactly it. It's the, that's the that's only exactly way it. I figured it out. It's a numbers game. It. It's yeah. the same as the engineering was making sure that that podium deck can support the weight it's yeah. a numbers game yeah so the the end game is we've got these 18 stackers and there's three big electric motors that power the 18 stackers right yes i don't know how do we decide which motor is it six six and six is that how it works or is it well no uh um, is it where they're located like the banks um, How does that work? The the banks. Well, oh oh, because they're divided the stackers, into yeah, yeah. three separate banks. Yeah yeah. Left, so right and back. So basically, what the way the system operates now, um, when it was originally designed, they could you could operate a couple at a time. Right. And right now we have uh, what uh, or your company. Leave that picture, Tim. For we're, we're going to need that. Mm -hmm. So Park Plus has basically redesigned this thing to um, uh, interlock. So when one motor is running, the others cannot. Yeah. Yeah, so it, so you can the, only move one at a time. You can only move one at a time. Yeah, which is fine. But originally, how like if that's the case, mm -hmm. right? Why three motors? Why not one motor that has a diverter valve of some kind? You, I, is this a question for Park Plus? Yeah, it's probably more a question for the way they design their system. I, I I'm not because like actually, we've got eighteen sure lifts, that. right? Yes, right. And then we have three motors. Mm -hmm. So my my question is: Is it divided a motor per six? You know what I mean? Or are they somehow, like on your boat, you know, your battery disconnects on your boat. Yeah, you, know, you yeah. can do off, one, two, all. Sure, sure. So is it, you know, are they directional or is it kind of a fluid? Yeah, massive? so it, it does. It goes into groups. Um, your stackers are divided in, on the podium deck into three different sections. And yeah, there is a motor for each one. But now they have a single control hub. Mm. And and the one control hub now basically sends the power off to each individual motor, mm. um, and and the hydraulic lines are actually all sleeved within the deck already. And yeah, that's crazy. They yeah. put they they basically like sink PVC pipe or something into the deck. That's right? it. Yeah, we're not the the hydraulic lines they're using are basically uh, like a high pro, high pressure. Um, I, I think probably the best way to describe it would be to uh, you know when you ever if you see a high pressure water line that maybe is used for your ice maker yeah. in, in in your freezer it's it's high pressure it's rigid but it's uh, like polyethylene so it it, it moves through uh, conduits real well and so in your deck of course with the engineer's permission to be able to put conduits in your deck we uh, they will actually sleeve these hydraulic lines through the deck down where the motor comes or, or, or is mounted on the uh -huh. wall and they'll they'll sleeve them up on the deck. Uh, next to where the, uh, the oh, hydraulic the lifts, go, yeah. uh, lifts actually yeah. are, are positioned. Speaking of where, Tim, get that picture back up that I had before. So these, these, this is a picture before they poured the concrete, and then these things that are sticking up from the rebar, the plates on kind of stilts, are the actual footings for the lifts. Yeah, those are your embed plates. Each one of those weighs about three hundred and fifty pounds, and they had to be installed through that rebar that yes. was already there. And so that's an easy one. A couple of these <laughs> things landed over the top of a column oh. and, and, and the rebar is so thick you you actually can't see the form of your deck standing over the top yeah. of it. There's so much steel in it. It's crazy. So those things... Yeah, that photo right there, that doesn't actually depict it 100% because you don't even have half your rebar on your deck right there. Right, but what you do see is that where that plate is at the top of the inbeds, the, the higher plate, they f that's the where the cement actually that's is That's your now. finished surface yeah, your yeah. floor. So yeah. you can see how thick that deck is. It's a, it's a proper 18-inch thick uh, just slab of cement or concrete. Mm -hmm. Craziness. Yeah, yeah. Heavy duty. Yeah. Yeah. This is like it's a lot of concrete. <laughs> it's a lot of concrete. Yeah, we're we're a thousand yards. I mean, on on that deck. So, is that what is that 
That's a lot. That's I mean, a, I know that's, I know a, lot. that's yeah. a lot. But There's like 110 trucks, I think we did nine yard trucks or so. I think we ended up doing about 111 trucks. If you were just putting a single story office building, just a regular just bleh, building, mm-hmm. whatever, yeah. on top of this underground parking structure, how thick would the deck be then? Well, I mean, if you're if you're just going to end up doing a uh, a podium concrete podium deck under an office, yeah. you might have a six inch deck. Oh, so we're talking three to five times that that thickness yeah, here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're doing a parking deck, you know, you you would up it from there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's heavy duty. It's yeah, yeah, for what you're what you're putting in there. Mm-hmm. I, I forget what the rating is structurally, but I've, I've, it's several hundred pounds a square foot. Which I is just I'm, really I have I like I'm trying to figure out like how much actual weight is going to be sitting on this. Like it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, what's uh, what are what are four cars weigh plus what are the lifts weigh? Let's see. If a car weighs an average of thirty five hundred, ton and okay, a half. Okay, so you've got fourteen thousand pounds per lift mm-hmm, mm-hmm. times eighteen of those. Yeah. Yikes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a calculator. That's I'm not a that lot. good at I mean, that. It's, it's, it's a lot. lot. It's, it's, it's a lot of weight. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what? So, what are the? You know, people keep the the biggest thing when I go. Oh man, this building's like it's gonna be really strong. People are like, oh yeah, because of earthquakes, right? So, like, what is the current like California standard like regarding you know a modern building and earthquakes? Like, what are they? I mean, obviously strength and yeah, whatever, but I, what are they looking for? Well, the biggest thing you have to do in a building for earthquakes, uh, and we we build all over the country, but we don't have to necessarily deal with the kind of code that we do here in California. And the biggest thing we have to deal with here is seismic, and and seismic you have to um, you have to make sure your buildings have a lot of shear. And what's uh, shear? Mean? So shear basically. Um, the um, best way to describe it, imagine a box, uh, an, an empty cardboard box, and you knock out the top and you knock out the bottom. Mm-hmm. And you lay the so box you just have on your its four side. Walls. You have, you have your, four, your four walls, but you knock out the top and you knock out the bottom. Now turn that box on its side, and, and you can knock the thing over real easy once it collapse. Now, the shear basically is if you were to close the bottom of that box. It strengthens it. It gives it oh, a wall okay. to keep to keep it from wanting to sway mm-hmm. like this. And and we don't have to build a lot of shear into buildings when we say we build in Colorado. Mm. Um, but when we build here, uh, yeah, you have to have a lot of shear. And you have some pretty substantial shear walls on this project. And those shear walls are supported by some very substantial beams um, to the point where when we were actually running the conduit in the deck. Uh, to get for the park plus or to get the power to the lighting uh, there's there's a mile of conduit in that deck that you can't see and i don't know if you have any photos of the uh the conduit in the deck but i don't think i do actually uh, I'll, I'll have to send you yeah, some you it's, send it's, it's impressive later. um but when you uh because you mean, can't run the conduit horizontally through the deck right you can't you can. It, oh you can yeah yeah you can run it horizontally but you're limited to where you can run it and how much you can run and, yeah. and the size and the spacing uh from conduits to each other and the spacing of conduit from rebar because i remember all of a sudden out of nowhere park plus was like yeah we need three inches conduit here and you're it was like too big yeah and you go um the deck will just collapse there's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you think about it you know i mean it's basically an air pocket yeah do it when you know when you put a long pipe in the deck it's an air yeah. pocket you get cracking on the top and the bottom and your deck could yeah totally break in the like middle that wouldn't work yeah, yeah no it wouldn't we work. put m- more smaller lines I we think, did we instead. yeah we, right. yeah, we <laughs> did yeah we did we did smaller lines uh, and there were a couple areas where the engineer says you can only run five conduits across this section that's 25 feet wide um, oh, okay, so i mean yeah. there, were, there were areas where we were extremely limited because of the seismic capabilities of the building yeah it's just just all of this stuff is so crazy to like to learn it in in real time. Is there, a there's scary. A, there's a lot. Everyone thinks of you know building. It's you know just stacks of blocks. You know, but I mean the background. Um, if if you want to build, I mean, any any kind of a commercial project in L.A. I mean, whatever you spend in the time in construction, you have to at least spend that amount of time ahead and, of time oh, getting yeah. through the city, planning yeah. the project. And and that's still moving at a well, quick rate too. It's hard to buy a property here. I mean, there's just buying. You know, it, yeah. just all I wanted was a pretty square piece of dirt, and that didn't you know put me at the end of a lawsuit or something. Right, it took right. four years to find that. Right. You know, it's not it's not hard. Properties. Yeah, yeah. 2013, you said right. Yeah, 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 and we went into escrow on three different places too. It was Real. a disaster. Yeah, it's it's a process. <laughs> Although not as much as a disaster if I had gone through any of the places. <laughs> yeah, you one still, you right still here, wouldn't be building. One you drive by every time you come, it's still for sale. The one on Jefferson. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. fucking 
Oof. Yeah. You should have seen the phase two on that shit. Oh my it, looked God. Like a, it looked like a phase two. I it's like a ghost. <laughs> it's like a Ghostbusters report or something. <laughs> it's like a disaster. Oil and who knows nuclear waste in the ground. It's vinyl chloride. Oh, is fun. The, nice. That's uh, thanks to Mr. Hughes. Oh, okay. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Howard Hughes. Yeah, nice. So some the shop aviator there. <laughs> and cleaner of metals and dumper of cleaning fluids yeah, into the ground. I'm sure his organization is still paying for that around here. I wonder if uh, well, what we we researched that there's there's like a, a major class action suit like brewing mm -hmm. um nothing's happened yet but there's a lot of like um they're scouring the neighborhood trying to get people yeah, onto get the people class on board, actions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, even mess. if you don't have to worry about yeah, contaminated soils, you have to worry in this area about methane. Oh, yeah. Which we haven't talked about. Yeah. So there's methane in the ground. Yeah, yeah. There's from cow farts. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Cows right. are just farting underground. Prehistoric cows, like <laughs> thousands of feet deep, you know? <laughs> yeah. So is it all of LA or just this? Just this, it's a pocket right here. Yeah. Not all of LA has to deal with it, but uh, the Culver City area, parts of West LA have to deal with it. And you get, you get pockets of it around. Uh, around California, but it's pretty heavy right here. So what happens with the methane? It bubbles up from the ground? Yeah, so uh, the methane basically just seeps out. You know, it's a natural occurrence. Who knows what from, but um, I'm, you know, leave it to somebody else. But uh, the, the methane just comes out through the soil, through cracks in the soil, and, and it vents out. And when you have an open air field, it's no big deal. It right. just vanishes and dissipates into the, to the air. But if your methane that's underneath your property ends up venting up into your parking structure and filling your contained space with methane and somebody lights a lighter or flicks a light switch on like, and there's a spark. Wait, OK, but it's but my parking structure is not airtight. It is airtight. What your, do you mean? Your parking structure is airtight. Is it? From the earth. 100% oh, airtight. Oh, no, 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 from the, from the earth. From the but earth, no, no, yes. Okay, but, but, but it wouldn't be airtight if you didn't put the methane barrier. Yeah, there's a methane barrier. Yeah. Right, right, but I'm saying, like, there is a methane barrier, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is... If you really wanted to make it simple, it's a tarp you put under the building. Yeah, a multiple layer tarp. <laughs> a big, expensive fucking yeah. tarp. It's <laughs> right. the most expensive what's, tarp. What's the can? The stuff, the, the, the screen oh, door? Flex it's flex like yeah. Flex Seal. Yeah, it's like a tarp and Flex Seal. Imagine, <laughs> imagine you had enough Flex Seal for a football field. Yes. That's, and it costs that much. What, it looks too, like, yeah. right? what does one can cover? A square, one square yard? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 It's, so it's just, we had a lot of cans of Flex Seal. But here. if you didn't put that big, giant tarp under the building. Yes. You're saying the methane would seep through the concrete yes. into the parking uh, deck. Yes. But it, it would then uh, it would then stay settle. in there? Yeah, it would oh, settle it's in heavier there. than yeah, air? Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, uh huh. It's heavier than air. It's heavier than air. So it's lighter than the ground, so it rises yeah, up, right. but it's heavier than air, yeah. so it sits on the ground right, once yeah. it gets... I mean, there's oh. pressures that move the methane out of the earth. Right, right, right. But, you know, it's denser than oxygen, so um, I believe it's denser than oxygen. So it sits down in the parking structure. It sits along oh, your I electrical think, okay, gear. Okay, so that because it, the re, the problem is that it doesn't keep rising it doesn't once keep it rising gets out of the earth. Ah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, now yeah. I understand the problem. Right, right. So, so it would basically sit down in your low areas it's sitting in your elevator pit it's in your lower level of your right. parking structure and spark and this actually happened around the corner not too far from here where uh, they did not have a full methane barrier on the building and uh, and conduits actually passed no underneath way. the building slab and methane actually ended up coming up through the conduits into the electrical gear. It basically used the conduits as an air channel yeah. into their electrical room filled the electrical room full of methane and it exploded killed a guy here yeah yeah it was, uh, it was a couple years ago i forget the name of the property was that the building right next to mine that burned no the, the no. tall building i don't think so oh, no, there was no. a big fire yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay so no it wasn't the, that building but but no, that should happen it, it, it actually happens it's yes. like christmas vacation yeah. when he throws <laughs> in the, the, yeah, the cigar yeah. in the sewer you know, i went like across that. the street to a yahoo to get some pictures of your project and uh, their whole parking structure's got the same thing it's got the methane vents that come out oh, of the yeah. deck and well all of the whole playa vista community I mean, yeah. the entire development yeah. has vents that come every building yeah. has vents that you go have all to have them yeah it took them you know when they bought that property they just finished it. Like, oh. it's basically almost done right now. Oh, man. Playa Vista. They bought it in 1987. <laughs> wow. There you go. <laughs> right? <laughs> Look at 2013 for uh, for your building. Imagine right? what that development costs. Yeah. But that but that guy's got a B. He's got a B. Oh, yeah. He's got that third comma. That guy's sitting on a third comma right now. Yeah, probably. For I'm sure. sure. Yeah, absolutely. All those apartments over there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah today's Whole market. Foods, Arc, Arc, Arc Light. He's got it all. Yeah, yeah. Rest, yeah. Restaurants keep 
circling through there though. Yeah. yeah, high rent. I guess I I think it's high rent. And I think it's not much a uh, dinner crowd. I think it's a big lunch crowd, not much dinner crowd. Mm, so yeah. I don't know. I we keep seeing restaurants circle through there though. It's I don't know. Whatever. Maybe it'll whatever. it'll find its place. Okay, so methane. We got our big tarp. That's you got your handled. tarp. You got your vents. You know, so anything that does get stuck underneath that tarp, yeah, goes into a vent system and up out through the uh, oh it catches it catches it yeah that way you don't get a buildup of methane pockets below your building oh yeah what well, what could happen then i don't know i just fill the space probably fill the space and, and want to eek burp out alongside the building maybe <sighs> which you don't need so it, it vents up through uh through the roof and then we have fire and then you have fire <laughs> and then oh my god i forgot about the fire Fuck. yeah the fire is a story all on its own so because yeah. here's the thing with fire with fire you have to operate under an assumption that every car on all those racks is filled with live babies. Basically, yes. <laughs> right? The way the fire department looks at no it. Such thing, there's no fucking let it burn strategy about any of this shit. <laughs> the reality is, is that's how the fire department would probably treat a building. But realistically, no. I mean, they, they want it designed as though. Yeah. Live know, babies. There's every live car. babies in every car and every car's got a bomb in it. West Side collector car storage and child care. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. You merge for with your the neighbor. nursery, turn left. Yes. <laughs> for the car storage, also turn left. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's a uh, it's a challenge, you know. Uh, well, because the city gives you water yes. at a certain volume, it's like three thousand gallons a minute, right? Yeah. Well, you, I mean, different depending on where you are, you have a different rating on oh, your shit, pressure. Oh shit! The commenters say methane's lighter than air, son. Uh, okay, well then you would just fill. Oh, thank you for that. I wasn't sure on that. So then maybe the ceiling would just catch it, or well, that's whatever. That's why the it rooms fill, fill up then. but it would it wouldn't fill, but it would still be bad. It would still be bad. Yeah. yeah okay. It still it would still fill in uh, a closed space. Okay. Copy so. that, scientists. We thank hear you. Ya. Oh, lighter someone did the math on the cars. Uh, 252,000 pounds. Oh, wow. Is that okay. much all those fucking cars <laughs> I don't wow. remember that one. <laughs> okay, so fire system. The city gives us fire uh, water at a certain amount. Yeah, yeah. And you have to test it. Before you go in and design a fire sprinkler system, you have to test the, uh, the gallons per minute that basically come out of a, a close hydrant. And, yeah. uh, and the pressure that comes out of that hydrant as well. So right now, your building um, is serviced by a six-inch fire line. And Which is what? Good, bad, it, awful? It's, it's good. For that size building, it would be perfect. Okay. It, it would have We would have no problem designing a fire sprinkler system for that building, uh, warehouse space, the office space, the parking structure below. But the catch is the park plus stackers. Okay. Uh, they add a whole new level in of uh, difficulty because, one, the city has never seen quad stackers inside a building before right and so essentially the code was rewritten because of this so can uh bruce canepa is a a, a major uh a race car restorer mm -hmm. uh retailer up north outside of san francisco okay he has a couple of quads mm -hmm. i think it's three or four quads are yeah. they inside they are okay but Back to back, it's side to side, different side to side, not front to back. Okay, but it, but it's diff It's a different county. It's like being in okay. L.A. County is what right. makes our well, LA yeah, City being in LA. L.A. County. So I mean, it, the United States, we have a building code, a national building code, um, and then it's you know it kind of works under the IBC, which is International Building Code. California has its own building code, and Los Angeles then has its own building code on top on of top that. Top of that, yeah. So we're we're kind of like really difficult here. And and Cal Park Plus and says this is the worst place on the entire planet to try and install a. Welcome to Los Angeles. <laughs> to to, he said there's two sets of rules: L.A. and then the rest of the globe. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly it. Yeah. Now, like I say, it, it's difficult to get around things here. So when the city wanted to, uh, uh, when you brought this concept to the city, uh, they basically said, "Okay, you're putting all these cars in one space." without a, a fireproof concrete deck in between your levels of cars, which is, of course, no known all over yeah, the place. So, parking so a structures. normal parking structure, if you had a fire on level three, presumably it wouldn't then spread to the cars above it Correct. because of all the concrete. Yes, right. Yeah. yeah, each deck is somewhat rated between the, the deck above or below it. And this is not. You basically have 100 cans of gasoline <laughs> in one room. in one room yeah and uh, and so they wanted a lot of fire sprinklers and so uh the they fire, want a lot of nozzles they want a lot of yeah a lot of individual sprinkler heads and i forget are they are they all mounted in this, they're mounted on racks like they there are they some are. on the racks yeah not only do we have sprinklers in the roof of the building we actually are going to be dropping lines down on the racks and then 
15 off of those to spray the cars if they were to light up on fire. So it's pretty much every car has its own close to every car. It's not it. quite every car. I mean, it's it's the it's again a numbers game. We only have so much water that we can work with off of a six inch line. We need an eight inch. And so um, we've basically run the math that we have designed the system to utilize the amount of water we're getting. Um, and, and some interesting things we ended up having to do that we actually increase the size of our backflow, which is what is a what's a backflow, a backflow preventer basically prevents water once it's entered your property and past your meter uh-huh. from going back into city water oh, because yeah. the city doesn't trust what's in your pipes. Right. So they have backflow preventers on them. And uh, oh, the city doesn't trust what's in your pipes what's in because your pipes. they don't want your dirty water ruining their plumbing. They're they're perfectly clean pipes. Oh, really? <laughs> I would think that this is so that if you if a water goes through a meter, you've mm-hmm. then paid for it and mm-hmm. if it goes the other way, you'd end up paying for yeah, it no, again. It, it's about it prevent that. Yeah, it's about no. water protection. Yeah, keeping <laughs> keeping the water clean for the neighbor Fucking and the guy down the street. Me. Yeah. <laughs> the city's pipes. Yes. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I know. So uh, so you have a 6-inch line, but we're putting an 8-inch backflow okay. preventer on it because it has to go through all these mechanisms uh in order to keep the water from going back into the street and so like little things like that that we had to do to try to like work the calculations you're paying for it but it's the uh, the alternative is having to hire or uh, basically continue and expand the design to add a fire pump well they said the alternative was a fire pump which Which, has to be put on the roof because there's no room this Mm -hmm. goes back to there being no room no room and so which means you have to run the fire line from the ground to the roof and back down but not only that because during a fire if the power is cut to your building you lose your power fucking generator so you would have to have a diesel generator on site which also has to be on the roof which also has to be on the roof because because i remember this because of the exhaust of the generator because even if the building is burning down the city gives a shit that your diesel generator is running indoors yes (laughs) yeah you have to have and it has to be because it has to go on the roof we would have had to reinforce the roof for the Mm -hmm. weight like this shit just kept rolling yeah, down it's got to be like a tier one level <laughs> generator like zero near zero it's like the emissions. size of a fucking golf like yeah. a volkswagen yeah. golf yes like. exactly <laughs> it's ridiculous yeah. like yeah the need for like a hundred more gallons a minute would yes. have necessitated this snowball yes. that began with fire pump and ended with new roof yes <laughs> yeah structurally engineering beams and columns and larger footings and <laughs> yeah, so every turn, every single turn on this project the has been uh, uh, complicated. Yeah, it always <laughs> just because it's never one thing. It's, you know. It rolls into to all these yeah. other things. You, you've you got, it, it is the biggest little building <laughs> you'll ever see. Ever. It's, a lot, it's very dense. It's extremely it's really dense, dense, exactly. Uh, let's, see what, uh, let's see what the audience has to say. If you guys want to talk construction with us for the next few minutes, we, uh, we got a bunch of questions from the audience. Or, I mean, if you want to talk cars too, get in the super chat we'll get through these with my man uh rich fricky of uh licha construction uh spencer says oh is podcast number 420 tomorrow is tomorrow the 420th podcast i haven't even (laughs) kept if it is well smoke if you got them (laughs) if it is we will uh we will celebrate in a manner i assure you is very appropriate given the holiday also i'm getting married on 420 so yay the real 420 um adrian says uh, thank you for your Twitter rants. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, would I ever? Oh, c- would I ever consider clipping for the show, similar to JRE clips? Um, so, uh, I think what he means is like doing clips of the show and uploading those to YouTube. Is that what? The- yeah, people. That's keep, what I'm reading. Yeah, people keep telling us that we would be a lot more successful if I cut clips from the show and put them on YouTube. I honestly haven't found the motivation. If you want to be my clipping intern email me editor click yeah if you can edit and you want to be a clipping intern i'll email me maybe i can get a job for you. <laughs> i got a job for you as well uh miguel says every car maker seems to have a weird model uh very different from the others in their lineup do any of those come to mind all right think of a car make the car manufacturer and then think of that one super weird car like uh if i say bmw it's like the i cars right the i8 and the i3 those are pretty weird first cayenne the first Cayenne. Well, now that's sort of the nor- now the 911. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you do Porsche, what's the weird one? What's that one with the engine in the back? Yeah. That's fucking weird. The <laughs> 911's a weird one. I don't know what else. Uh, okay, what other car maker makes a weird one? Hyundai, Veloster, 
it's got three doors that's weird mm -hmm. jaguar has that eye pace which is weird the electric one i was driving right right um i don't know if i necessarily follow your logic I mean, I think every car maker does reach for the stars. They try and push either the envelopes of styling or technology in one direction, and you end up with something kind of funky, like the Isuzu Via Cross. Remember that one? Uh, that one I don't know. You don't remember the Via? <laughs> Dude, give me a picture of the Isuzu Via Cross. <laughs> Is, you know what? It, it was weird looking, but it, it correctly predicted basically all crossovers now but like 10 years ago that thing remember that thing oh yeah ugly right. lights weird <laughs> body cladding it's like the and amc a, and a, eagle a crossover yeah back then someone i worked at a dealer and someone traded one of these things in once and i thought it was the coolest looking thing ever and then i drove it and i went oh <laughs> oh bleh. i don't know but not every automaker has weird ones but everyone pushes the envelope in one direction jordan says uh uh oh <laughs> Someone, he wants to plug his own AV design business. Oh, this brings me to another point. As we posted construction pictures and stuff on Instagram, so many people offered their, their services, but if they were in those businesses, they should have known, based on the photos of the construction, at what point we were at, and we had things. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. I, I would say, me? I mean, they don't know the whole background on it, and, uh, you know, I, I think that... Uh, Everybody likes to kind of be part of construction a little bit, um, and and everybody I think has an experience in construction. Everybody's remodeled their bathroom. Everybody's, you know, refaced their kitchen cabinets at one point, or changed their carpet out, or gotten some new moldings in their house. And and everybody has is an expert. And it happens. It, it happens, you know. And and I can't blame them for you know ha wanting to have some experience in it. I I dabble in cars. I'm not an expert, you know. But I enjoy it, and I like to talk about it, and you know, and I like to comment when other people are doing things with cars. Yeah. But it was tough, it, man. It, it's I remember the same you, way. You yeah. talked to me about when I had comments on my Instagram. You're like, dude, some of these people need to stop talking about construction. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Some of them I are forget pretty what funny. was the real. I forget what was the really bad one. People were asking about. They were questioning the type of concrete. Yeah, yeah. We were how using. long it's it's setting out? Oh, the trucks. And, oh, because it was a picture of all the trucks. Yeah, which yeah. was one of my favorite oh, yeah. pictures. I love I think. that picture. That There's is one of the picture, coolest. I, it, you, you may have to go really far back you to pull find that one it, up. Too. But it's basically it looks it's so Hollywood because it's when we poured the foundation. Yeah. All these glimmering blue trucks blocking yeah. the entire street. It's like something street. out of like the 70s and you got the gas station sign in the foreground and yeah, yeah it, it's it's pretty cool. But. It was uh it was such a great picture but people were all like that concrete's going to go bad Yeah, there, I guess there was legitimate concern. But that's that is based in a truth. Right? That, is, that is based on the what truth. What is that yeah. truth that that is so, based in? So basically, you have a certain amount of time between the time the concrete leaves the batch plant, where it comes from, and the time it has to be placed mm. and set um, that uh, that the concrete's actually any good. And we have, you have hired a deputy inspector, a third party inspector. Yeah, to full, time. <laughs> full time. <laughs> yeah, those during that concrete those bar. checks suck. <laughs> yeah. I don't like those fucking I'm like, what are you doing again? But that is that makes sure that oh, your yeah. concrete is safe and yeah. it and it made it from the batch plan in time because although I wouldn't place bad concrete, there are plenty of bad contractors that put the con in contractor and would like to use bad concrete. There's the pictures. You just went by it, Tim, on the right. There Yeah, all the trucks. Yeah, cause that's, that's like not even all the trucks. I, I can see seven or eight in just that picture. Yeah. How yeah. many trucks did we have though? Well, there was a that that day I think we had 115 trucks. 115 fucking cement mixer trucks that's that's right Fuck. that's going down sentinella right there <laughs> sorry my bad i complained about traffic except that day yeah that you, day you created the traffic <laughs> that, that day, day it was my fault there's but, been a few days we've shut down that road but yeah there was a lot of people okay so so if the concrete sits for too long yeah but th that was a thing that was planned for it was all planned for <laughs> none of the trucks i think we ended up having to turn one truck away but it didn't it, it wasn't even one of the was in the in the photo what happens if it gets turned away they the batch plan eats it you the know? batch plan yeah, eats yeah, it. yeah they're yeah. the ones that uh, that either chose the bad route or uh you know hired a driver that drove too slow or oh yeah they made me map out the route we had to remember that we had to submit yes, yes. <laughs> we had to submit maps of the route that the dump truck drivers were going to drive yep. and it was like an l <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, you're a turn. whole 500 <laughs> feet from the freeway. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I had to do a study for this. This yeah. is bullshit. <laughs> Traffic study. Just but at the end of the day, your brake tests were ridiculous. At the end of the day, yeah. the brake tests uh, were like 8,000. And that was um, 
uh, at 28 days. Uh, we we were, we were oh yeah so they take a they take a sample and they literally yeah. put it in a pressure tester yes exactly right? so so as the concrete's being poured all day long they take cylinders and uh, at, at different various trucks and times of the day depending on the heat and and uh, um, and they all came from the same plant but they'll test those they'll actually take those into a hydraulic press and break them at one week at two weeks and at three weeks and then you watch the rated pressure uh, go up as as time moves on and and you were hitting. Uh, uh, rated pressure, uh, a couple of them uh, were after even the second week. Well, that's good. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. good that's concrete. good concrete. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So by the time we ended up hitting 28 days, you were you were well above. Uh, like I said, you were at 8,000 on a couple of them, almost 8,000. What's the what's the range you're, you're looking you're, for there? Your concrete was rated at 5,500 psi. Oh, and so if you're hitting 8,000, you're like you're oh, way above it. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's great. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, and good we concrete. and and we poured it uh, the day after that, and really, I mean, it, it was in the rain. We had nothing going on because we had two weeks of rain, and so it was cool. Yeah, and it was wet, and that's what concrete loves when it when it's cured. it likes being rained. It on. likes to be. You want to slow cure on concrete. Hmm. Yeah, uh, a hot cure. Concrete in itself, when it cures, it gets hot. You can put your hand down yeah, on, on a said, slab. Someone said in an email, you know, I get the emails and I was traveling, but someone said 10 minutes after pouring, it registered some crazy high temperature or yeah. something. What is, explain that. Yeah, so it's a chemical reaction. Uh, if you ever work with epoxy, basically, you know, I mean, if you mix up too much epoxy, it almost catch the cup on fire. <laughs> it, it, it'll, it gets hot. It's a chemical reaction. The, and concrete works the same way. It's the cement and the concrete. And, uh, and, and as it warms, as it cures, it gets, or as it cures, it gets warm. And, and that's what happens. And the thicker it is, the warmer it gets and, and the longer it stays warm. And so the fact that it rained and was cool for the following weeks was really nice because it kept that heat down mm. and it kept the sun off of it. And from, you know, when you, concrete gets too hot, it can crack. Okay, so you want it to be warm, but not too warm. Well, the concrete is warm on its it'll own. It'll be warm, yeah, yeah, period. So it'll be so warm you, on its own. So you're keeping it, you Just want it as cool as you can get keep it, pretty it cool, much. Yeah. For an example, when they Hypothetically, built, if it snowed, if you're in Colorado, you pour and it snows, You don't what? want to freeze your concrete. Oh, okay, that's yeah. bad. Yeah, you don't want to freeze your concrete because okay. there's water in the concrete. Oh, and so, so it got, cracks there, too. Yeah, you got to be careful about water freezing and wet concrete. Mm. So, yeah. so rain is good, snow is bad. Rain, rain, And rain isn't necessarily good until it has a chance to set up. Right. You need you need, it, you need it to be able to be hard enough that you can walk on it. Right, right, right. Uh, wet, wet concrete, and it's not good. Ah, cool. Yeah. Uh, w. Bush says, is it an, a LEED certified facility? It is not lead. No. I don't. What were the requirements for lead, and why didn't we do that? So there was a reason. Uh, there's there's the, the cost. Uh, lead leads ex pretty expensive to do. Um, it's in California, in Los Angeles, we're pretty close to being about as green and energy efficient as you can get anyway. You know, lead really kind of started a, a ways back before California Green Code came into play. Um, with your LED lights and the fact that your roof is designed for future solar panels, you have solar zones. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that that the building has already that basically would fall into a lead category without the additional bureaucratic requirements. Yeah, we did the math on solar panels. It didn't really seem. To, you don't we, have a lot of area. We up didn't there. have that much space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it would. It, it does pay itself off. We've done some very large solar panel systems, PV photovoltaic, voltaic, photovoltaic. Thank you. Ah, systems in the past, and they do. They pay themselves off. We found. I mean, at least the last one we did was going to be um, about six years, six or seven years. Uh -huh. Um, with the actual rating that we were pulling in off the panels. Yeah, but we didn't have that much usable roof area. Right, right. So and it, and like, it's mm -hmm. economies of scale. The smaller the system you do, the more expensive it's going to be per panel. Yeah. And so, yeah, it would be a longer payoff term. Um, but your roof is designed for it. It's engineered for it. The way the skylights are designed are actually like laid out so you can have an efficient amount of panels on your roof. Even the conduits are stubbed up. For uh, for that, good thing I did that for the next owner. That's you, very kind. It's so kind of me so to nice make that you. ready for him or her at my own expense. Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing. Look, if the city goes, solar panels are mandatory now. Mm -hmm. If they if they decided that, I think it would be annoying for developers and private homeowners, but it would probably be good for society, maybe. Right? Yeah, I if mean, the science backed it does it up. work. If the science backed it up. Uh, if, but that's a th but saying that you are building a building, you're mm -hmm. not required to put solar panels, but you're required 
to make it easier for anyone who might want to eventually even if you change your mind in a few years i I don't i don't see i don't see the logic of that yeah uh, i i know it's a lot of frustrating it is frustrating between the lid thing and the solar panel thing you have uh you you are stubbing up for chargers as well you don't have them in Uh, no we're putting them in the basement aren't we uh no there it's it's a stub up only for them oh really yeah yeah so but i mean it's it's a requirement that you but you can put in whatever charger you we're gonna i think we're gonna end up putting them in okay i mean yeah. you can do tesla chargers you can do yeah. i mean oh, fuck them I mean, <laughs> supercharger at the mall around the corner row there you go yeah go there <laughs> there is the supercharger happens to be at the at the westfield mall which oh, okay. is right there oh, okay so it is like actually we're in the only convenient place in west well, la it, to go to a supercharger That's i was good. i would put in a, the regular combination charger for the everyone who's not tesla okay yeah, yeah. There, there's a whole host i mean and, and uh, Go watch charges. my iPace review, homie. I just ranted about the state of the fucking EV oh, yeah, yeah. network in LA. It's a disaster. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of them. If but somebody wants to make make money, just fucking throw them up. Throw them up everywhere. Well, it's a requirement to at least not necessarily put them in on new construction, but you have to have them ready for new construction. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it, it is changing and, and it has to be mandated by the government in order for people to want to do that I because know. it costs money. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there are people as passionate about the chargers as there are about solar. Yeah. And so that's how I'm, that I, made Having into now law. experienced the public EV charging network, I, and, and my, res- not just the experiencing of the network because the network is absolutely underserving the, the customers at the yeah. moment because in this year, especially like. There's like over 20 new EVs coming out this year. Yeah, wow. Well, and like, there just aren't that many yeah, public chargers. Not and, service and the alternative is limiting it to people who own homes or work in offices where their employer provides it. Mm-hmm. So you have to provide it for yourself. Your employer has to provide it for you. Or mm-hmm. if you're a tenant, your landlord has to provide it for you. There's not any options for the public. So right. like- I don't know if you own gas stations. Why aren't you getting in on this? Like you can yeah. sell the power. You don't yeah. have to give it away. Yeah, yeah, no. It's and all sold. every time I've gone to charge a fucking car, I've bought a coffee or a sandwich, or I went to I went to Tesla one. Mm-hmm. I went to Foot Locker. I bought a hundred and fifty dollar pair of shoes because I need, I was killing time charging the car. Yeah, so, yeah. Like. I think I think that I actually think in that sense the city should go further and make you put the charges make you in. put the charger yeah. the actual charges not just stub up for them yeah yeah I mean but you know you open a kind of a can of worms the same way that you have an issue with trying to make sure that your power in your building is utilized that's true I suppose you know if the gas station yeah. on the corner's got 400 amps and he needs to put yeah, in a 200 a amp point. charger well then other you know other people after this this debate happened on Twitter mm-hmm. over uh, last week mm-hmm. about public ev charging network and i got some really nice really thoughtful notes from a few people who were engineers or knew about civ the city and they said look you know the city doesn't really have the ability to put these fast chargers in all the places they probably should and it's gonna be a problem yeah and it's expensive i mean uh, when you're pulling a lot of amps it's big wire it's big conduit yeah and yeah i mean you have to have the the infrastructure has to be there to be able to handle it i mean we've done large developments where even with transformers the lines on the telephone poles are literally aren't large enough to be able to service the new building we're going to construct. Well, that's good. That's, what do you do then? You have to put new lines? You have to petition, petition the uh, and go to the utility and say, we need new, uh, we need new lines. Yikes. I mean, and we've had to install a miles. Or not, uh, not us, but the utility has had to install the miles from the pole, the from, nearest, from the yeah, the uh, nearest substation, yeah, yeah, on up to our our, our building. So it can Yikes. be extremely expensive. Yeah, the power demands. I mean, everything is powered by electricity these days. I mean, I, looking at this desk, I, I see. Uh, there's I a mean, lot going on up here. Yeah, there's there's like a hundred amps burning right here. <laughs> Pro- pro- there probably are. There so, probably are. Yeah, no, it's it's. It's real. I mean, yeah, shit uses yeah. power. Yeah, like, exactly. And this building never was designed to have this kind of electronics in it, you know? I would hope so because there's a dentist downstairs and he drills my teeth <laughs> and he probably has some juice. He's got x ray machines and shit. Yeah, maxing out that wire starts glowing outside. <laughs> <laughs> they joke. I'm going in for a teeth cleaning tomorrow at 2.30. <laughs> <Okay. 2. 30? laughs> Everyone that comes up here is like, the fucking dentist. I'm like, yo, chill. He's my dentist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I should have to go far. I just take, he takes it out of the rent. There you go. <laughs> you <know? laughs> um, what else we got here? Oh, uh, Michael says, uh, for me, creating digital content can feel like I'm sending things out into the void, no matter how proud of it. So, uh, so am I getting some peace of mind uh, having a brick and mortar business? Um, 
Totally. First off, there's a couple things. I agree with you on some level about digital content into the void. I'm not at the point right now. Like when I send something out there, there's a pretty, you know, pretty instant response to it. But I totally am. Yes. The idea of a physical thing, like same reason I like cooking. It's like, Da, 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 look at this thing we made like you know we have professionals doing the real work obviously but like yeah like it's not so much about sending things out into the void as it is about you start to feel like the internet is like real life and there's like a lot of real life that's not on the internet so I'm really looking forward to like interacting with people face to face that are my customers mm -hmm. and like that and not not seeking the gratification of the internet. I think that's going to be very nice. It's going to look really cool when you walk in that that's, room too. It's going to look awesome. Oh my God. <sighs> it's going to look awesome. The office overlooking the yeah. stacker. No, the building is going to be really that's cool. That's going to be really yeah, fun. Yeah. And I didn't physically design any of it myself, but I had enough input where it feels like I had. You've been I going through a lot of finishes recently with the architect and, and how, yeah. you, how you want it to look. I mean, it's <laughs> going to be been you. decorating. <laughs> yeah, you've been decorating. I mean, yeah, I mean, essentially, yeah. I mean, it's going to be you. It is it is your building. Yeah. It's, it's good. Exactly the way you it's want good. it. It's good. It's all. I'm just gonna walk up and down the ramp. Like, this, <laughs> this is the perfect ramp. Yeah. <laughs> Those windows, though. You and Rick Spader. You know, we didn't talk about the windows because can you pull up on Tim Auto Auto O T T O Auto Car Clubs uh, Instagram? My fizz, my friend in Scottsdale, who's got one of these things, okay, right? Okay. My friend Eli opened one in Scottsdale. Oh, okay. Fifty thousand square feet. Oh my god. The place nice. is like a fucking Costco. Nice. And he's got to air condition it. <laughs> he said it's oh, five yeah. G's a month. He's got to. <laughs> That's it from the outside with the Hummer, and he's got some Park Plus triples in the in the middle. Okay, and uh, no, that's that's not it. Tim, go the next, uh, go go back. Um, the one with the uh, see the sign there. That yeah, that's the outside of it. Um, but he's got an elevated like a clubhouse with a full on glass wall. Oh yeah. Just a full proper glass wall. Nice. Because he's in Arizona. There's like no laws. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can, no, you it's can not do a that. fire rated wall. Yeah, no, here, look, here. This is an image, right? Oh, so yeah. we're now up at the upper level looking yeah. over a coffee table and through a glass wall into the storage unit. Right. It would be physically impossible for me to build that. You could not do that here. Nah. No. Just a straight up hard no. No, yeah. Yeah, go go back. There's the size of the window. It's a full it's a full frame window. Yeah. Can't do it. You have to because they, cause it's all fire rated glass. Yeah, Whereas yeah. in Arizona, they don't even require that. Yeah, you have a rated wall basically between your garage and your office space. And uh, yeah, you have yeah, we we had to limit the what size. Are, how of the do they windows. do the ratings? What's the rating system? It, it's it's by hour. So you have thirty minute, one hour, two hour, three hour, and so you have a two hour separation. Um, so the, there's a fire burning in the warehouse. All the cars are on fire. The fucking shit's hitting the fan. Yeah. I can finish up what I'm doing before leaving. Finish your email. <laughs> like, I mean, we can finish the show. Yeah. Like, hey, guys. Just, like, I mean, we'll watch it through the glass. It'll yeah, be a fireplace. We'll you know? live stream the yeah, end of the we'll world. Grab a beer and we'll head out. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to do that. And then we have these windows that are, so you can see, but they're like. They're three they, by four. And, and they cost as much as a Honda. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Basically, it's just so You're nuts. like $70,000 in glass for five little windows. It's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. But you're not you probably won't die in a fire you'll no, probably be it, it'll just be you'll probably calmly walk out yeah yeah well and that's the purpose you know yeah. you, know, you want to make sure that it's it's all about people protection yeah um, so let me interpret this guy's question a different way do you have more financial confidence not being held to youtube's potential oh definitely the problem with the you know youtube is such is such a great way to get into entertainment because mm -hmm. there's zero barrier you know, it's a very, uh, it's a simple way to earn a living. You get right. people to watch your shit right. and then you get paid. I mean, getting enough to earn a living off it is hard. It's not, it's not easy, but it is simple and pretty straightforward. Right. Um, but you are so beholden to YouTube. You can never, you'll never get a raise. Work for you literally. Yeah. Imagine working for a company, you never get a raise. It's right. not possible. Um, and they could change the algorithm in your favor or against your favor at any time. Um, and you, you, you are. They could just fucking decide to delete your account one day because you don't. That happens to people, you know, for whatever reason, with, whether yeah. it's on purpose, you know. And and so, having this place is a, is the freedom from that. Yeah. So I can. I don't think it's going to be any less work. It's just no, going to no, be a different no, no. kind of work. Yeah. It's just it's it's like 
it's a real physical thing. Yeah. It's like they I, can't I they it. can't take it away. They yeah. can't change the algorithm of parking. <laughs> <laughs> cars go in, cars go out. You're going to be giving yourself raises here as, as parking That's, just becomes more yeah. and more limited over 3% the years. 3% a year. I already sent out the email. Yeah. I should I forgot. I meant to add you guys to the mailing list. Oh yeah. I, I have the mail I started the mailing list cool, cool. cuz I got my brands and my logos and shit. Nice. It's looking good. Nice. It's going to be good. It's going to be like one of those you know, real hipstery businesses with fake heritage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like what's the uh, like Warby Parker? <laughs> you know, was oh, it Wolf of Wall Street? Yeah, yeah. Oakmont, re yeah. whatever. The fuck it is. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like rich people use it. You know, that's all you need. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, as MB is French. He says, "Have you ever been left? Oh, this is for you, uh, for you, Rich. Have you ever been left without final payment for large projects?" Uh, such as REITs. I don't know what an REIT is, but um, my father is an architect, he says, that has seen major, major monies unpaid to contractors. Yeah, you know, uh, we're very selective with our clientele. Uh, I mean, we we need to make sure that whoever we end up working for uh, has the money to do the project. I mean, we've definitely turned down projects where you know, when we find out who, who we're dealing with, it's like, you know, I, I appreciate you asking me, but no thank you. Um, but, but I mean, everything we do, we, we do everything we can to protect ourselves um, from fraudulent clients uh, in the event that it were to ever happen uh, with uh, lien uh, releases and uh, lien waivers. And Oh, um, yeah. We had to put and, up some money, didn't we? <laughs> well, yeah. I think we I had mean, to put up. Didn't we have to get a bond? I think uh, we well, no, that's for the bond. city. Yeah. You ended up having to do a shoring bond on this project oh, in yeah, case you bond. damaged their street. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I had to bond the thing. <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, basically, uh, contractors have lien rights, and uh, we need to make sure that we maintain those uh, uh, our time frames when we ask for payment. So if payment goes on a certain date, then we lien a project, and basically the owner has to battle to get it back, the pro- property back, uh, the, unless they pay us. So um, and there, there's a lot of protections that we, you know, keep a close watch on <laughs> in order to make sure we get paid. Yeah. Nah, I don't have to worry I mean, about listen, this guy. My fucking deadbeat status is high right now. I overpaid. <laughs> by, I overpaid by accident yeah. the other day. We got two pay application <laughs> checks from him. Once. Like, all right. I wrote this one. I was like, God, I really this number sounds familiar. Why the money? Hey, Matt. Idiot. What? Like, we, we got another check from you. <laughs> Hold that one for next month. <laughs> I'll just hang out of this one. Really <laughs> fucking stupid. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I like paying people on time. Feels good. No, yeah, he's, he's believe, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> the one president of the United States has left some contractors oh, high and dry. Only, only, only thirty <laughs> or forty thousand of them. Yeah, I, it, I mean, honestly though, it does happen when you're working with some people. They, uh, they don't want to finish a job. And the same protections that we have against owners, we have those same protections against some contractors. I mean, we are contractors. You contract to get a certain job done in a yeah. certain amount of time frame. And if people fall down in a project, then, you know, you go after them. Yeah. And uh, it's just, it's all, it's it's law, you know. Yeah, it it's, sucks. It, it sucks. It is, it is what it is. It is what it is, you know, but uh, <clears throat> and, um, it has not been an issue. We've had a, an amazing crew of subcontractors on nice. this project. And everybody's been working out really well. And the finishes I that like are coming the, out. I like the rebar guys are fucking crazy. They're I crazy. I like those guys. Those yeah. guys are they're the wire tying guys. Yeah, yeah. They're Rod nuts. busters. Yeah. yeah. Them guys are nuts. I, I can't. I don't even stay know. Stay out of just stay out of the rebar guy's way. <laughs> I, I ruined like four shirts just like walking around looking at stuff. Like, I'm used to walking around. I, I, I wrecked a couple pairs of jeans. They probably go through a site. pair of boots every week. Those yeah. guys. Just yeah. The balance. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's stuff. it's rough work. You yeah. Know? Mad respect for those guys. And, and honestly, the block guys right now moving that block. Dude, them guys are hauling heavy blocks up and down. All that stuff on that <laughs> scaffolding right now has been lifted up there by hand. I'll put pictures on Instagram later. I, did, I forgot it's, to. It's earlier. cool. Uh, Dupe Snog. I like that name. That's a good one. It says, I work construction and live in LA. I'm looking for a new work truck slash daily driver under 40 Gs. It's got a seat five and tow a race car on the weekends. Uh, he says he's looking at diesel F250s and Silverados. Those sound like used options to me. See, in L.A., you drive a big ass pickup truck. In L.A., yeah. is that too bu- too big for you? Do you really need all that truck? Um, you know, as a contractor, I got to have a truck. But I mean, do you? But if you had a smaller truck, it, would it really okay, impact so your life? No, no. Uh, <laughs> honestly, no. You have a giant truck. <laughs> I've got I'm, it's an F one fifty, but it's you know it's is lifted. Yours a one fifty. It's oh, only it's a one fifty. But you know, in, in I think it's twenty fourteen. Maybe someone can correct me on that. F one fifties, F two fifties, and F three fifties all have the same cab now. 
It was really so, smart. Okay, so that's... It was smart of Ford. You know, they have yeah. one line now for cabs, and they oh. put it on a different uh, chassis now. And they did it by making the 150 cab huge. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, if That's why yours cab, looks like a 250, because it, it's a 150 lifted with the right combination yeah, of Yeah, different bed, yeah, a different yeah. hood, and different power plant in it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's it's a little big for LA. Um, I mean, we have we have an, a company truck, you know, for for driving around town Tacomas. Tacomas, it, it, they're they're maneuverable. You know, they're pretty fuel efficient, and, uh, and of course, it's a Toyota. So the, the resale on those things is unreal. Strong, yeah, it's unreal. Tacoma, even brand new Tacomas are like almost getting over sticker right now. It's yeah, silly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. So I mean, it depends. If he's talking about towing a race car, this guy, it depends on is he towing an enclosed trailer and is it a heavy or a really light race car? Because sometimes people have heavy ass race cars. Oh. I am gonna guess he doesn't need a Super Duty. Well, the diesel has amazing torque on the thing. Uh, we have an F uh, two fifty diesel. It's a it's an 08, though, but it's of course it's got a big lift on it as well, and that thing hauls ass. And it is it's got amazing amount of torque. We'll tow a uh, uh, if you want to look it up. It's a thirty one Jupiter. Uh, it's a center is, console. Oh, it's a boat. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah, yeah, yeah. big center console boat uh, with a couple of twin three uh, three hundreds on it, and and you hardly even know you're towing it. I, right. I just towed it a thousand miles down to Mexico last year, and endorsement for the Ford from Rick. You actually know your trucks more than I do. I don't drive a lot of like big trucks. You know, yeah, like, you drive more big trucks. Yeah, we, than I we're do. a truck family. For yeah, sure. yeah. I had I, back in 2013. I had as a company vehicle a heavy duty Silverado, oh. which was a dually, and it was a short bed. Yeah, and it was fucking fast. Like <laughs> it was a Duramax with the Allison. Oh, okay. It was, yeah. and we had a tune on it. It was mm-hmm. really fast. Yeah, yeah. But it rode. It had, it had between the suspension and the seats. It was a, it, I, I was I hated it so much. Unless <laughs> you were towing <laughs> a big, unless you were towing a fifth wheel. If you're yes. towing a fifth wheel, it was lovely because yeah, yeah. it had all the proper weight on it. But yeah. empty, it was a nightmare. Well, and that's why I so say get a, yeah, yeah. That's why I say get a half ton. Yeah, because if you're driving, well, don't around get an F three fifty. Don't get a dually. I mean, unless no. you're really pulling a lot of weight. I mean, it, it, there's no difference between a two fifty and three fifty except for spring tension, I believe. Um, is there? Is that it? Yeah, it's the same same power plant, same everything else. It's just uh, well, it's just how much. It, Weight How much dragon weight it can carry? Yeah, yeah. and uh, I mean, but I'll ride in the back seat of that the F two fifty, and you get a side ache. <laughs> it's, yeah, on the freeways it's the around sec- here, it's the like, secondary vibrations. It's terrible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you bounce all over the place. Yeah, but if it you feels on, like you're getting the the bouncing of the yeah, chassis yeah. flex. I yeah, mean, yeah. You put a toolbox in the back of the thing or something, you'd probably be all right. Yeah, you put enough weight in it. Well, yeah. I had a, I had a Raptor, and it was the same kind of deal. When it was empty, you right. rode rough, but with four people or right. with a bed full of gear, right, it actually right. had just enough weight to get past Soften the bypass. It is on the suspension exactly yeah, yeah. Right, right. i think the colorado diesel tows almost eight thousand pounds too. oh yeah colorado's okay. i would yeah. look at I, really? someone just rolled up with one of those the other day lot carlos lago did and the rivion it. apparently tows a shit ton that that's new not electric real thing the, the not real van that shit ain't real <laughs> <laughs> call me when that's real we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> when that's real we'll fucking talk. i have not seen one yeah i mean i don't know uh, i don't know what the towing is on a new ranger either but i think they look nice yeah, they, they are. Do, They're a pretty good-looking truck. Yeah. And actually, when uh, Zach had a Ranger as a press car, um, my co-host, who's not here today, and uh, and really liked it, came back raving about it. Hmm. So uh, maybe check out the Ranger if it meets your towing needs. Uh, RJK Photograph says, if this project goes well, plans for a second location, maybe something closer to New York <laughs> City. <laughs> this, th- for me, the only places that I can find right now with the density required to make an idea like this work is New York City, meaning Manhattan, uh, San Francisco, Miami Beach, and LA, West LA. Yeah. Like we said earlier in the show, my next one will probably be within five miles of this one, not 2,000 miles. Why have to? Why make yourself have to get on a plane? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe like close to Manhattan Beach or something, like somewhere close by, because like, like I said, the circle's small. You know, this isn't. You're gonna my, fill this thing quick within, yeah, like you say, a few. I'm miles. gonna fill this quick, and most of my customers are gonna be from a very small radius. Right, yeah. right. No one wants to drive too far for their car. No, and there's there's other storage in LA. Like if you go to you go to Burbank, mm-hmm. you want to go to uh e- the e- the northern the valley. Like there's a bunch of places that are reasonably priced. And there's it's only more land. this one yeah. little pocket. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my friend Sean has a place called Autotopia in Burbank. I'll plug it. Mm-hmm. I don't even. It's, I don't even give a fuck. I'll plug the thing. It's half half the price of mine but it's in Burbank Burbank, Burbank. so for me it's a non-starter but if you're in Burbank it's around the corner from Leno's anyway no so probably not New York 
not. There's a, if you're in New York, um, it's called Collector's Car Garage. It's in Bedford. My friend runs it, and it's a great operation. Anton says, uh, since we are so limited in electrical power, did we consider adding solar to the roof to supplement that, or is there a reason that that wasn't on the table? I don't think, does it factor in? No, it doesn't really work that way. When you're working with solar, basically, the way solar works is it it spins the meters backwards. You know, it doesn't really... uh, It it doesn't change your amperage. It doesn't give you more amps because, you know, when when you're starting a motor, you have to have stored capacity. You have to have stored power in order to take that load. It's like cold cranking amps almost, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, a a solar panel would work great for basically running a, a light bulb. Uh, but it doesn't have that that capacity to basically the uh, the rolling power as they they term it uh, to start motors, and yeah. it only works when it's sunny, so it doesn't necessarily help you yeah. at night. Yeah, it would save me money, but it doesn't. Uh, that's it doesn't help. Capacity. It doesn't add what the capacity that the the question is implying that it might. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, Rye Dog says, uh, "Oh, just want to support. Thank you very much." Uh, Andrew says, uh, will, will we get Larry Casilla back on? Yes, we will next week. Larry will be in studio. He's flying out here. Larry, my friend Rich, is uh, one of the best detailers in the world. He is a l- extremely expensive. <laughs> um, like I've known him since I was 12, and I literally can't afford him. <laughs> uh, but because I bought that Countach, and it's like content because he makes videos too, mm-hmm. he's coming out here with this other dude, Kevin Brown, who's like the other best detailer in the world, and they're going to go nuts on the Countach oh, for nice. video. Nice. Um, so they're going to be on the show next week. Um, Larry will be here. Lastly, Ned says, uh, are there any ongoing concerns from the phase one and phase two, uh, which are uh, environmental inspections, basically? Uh, yeah. No, I, really. I mean, right now we've we've passed all hurdles. Uh, the biggest thing we have to still get through is our fire sprinklers, but that's about it. And we're pretty close. Yeah. So ongoing concerns, Ned, would be if I had bought one of those dirty properties that I passed on. Mm -hmm. So, so basically they look at the history of the property, right? If you buy a property that has spent the last 80 years as a auto body and paint shop and there's chemicals in the ground and there were no laws to just dump the chemicals out the back porch, (laughs) which there weren't. Right. But today, that's mm-hmm. still your fault. If those chemicals migrate underground to your neighbor's property or multiple neighbor's property, they can then sue you because you you and your property, propertial ancestors have <laughs> dirtied their property. So my property, the ground was dirty, but not because of anything that was done on site. It was There was dirty industry happening in the vicinity, and that groundwater, correct me, stop me if I'm wrong, the groundwater migrated under my property. So we were responsible for studying and cleaning our own property and making sure that my business doesn't contribute, but because the historical use of the property was administrative and never industrial, there are no ongoing concerns beyond putting the methane barrier and all that shit. You got it in a nutshell. Yeah. Did no, I, I learn mean, that properly? You, you, yeah, I learned something nailed doing it, this. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's exactly right. Um, you know, when we dug down, obviously, not only did we dig down to the, the finished floor of the concrete on the lower level, but we had to go way below that for our mat slab. It was like 30 yeah. feet we dug to? Uh, no, not quite that far. No, uh, for the testing, I mean. Oh, for the testing, yeah. yeah. You, were, you were over 30 feet. 38 or feet, maybe yeah. it was mm-hmm. deep. It, it was pretty deep. And uh, But, uh, you know, you always have that concern because when you take your borings, you take them in like one or two different spots of your site. And uh, and, and it's always the, the telltales when you actually start digging. Did we find something? Yeah. And you get down to 10 feet and you smell the dirt and it doesn't smell oily. It doesn't smell like it's contaminated. And you, and you look at it and you can tell, I mean, you, we've dug out dirt in, in some areas and, um, I, most recently in Vernon, uh, there was some really bad soil down there and in the first scoop you pull up and it smells oily and it's kind of tarry. Oh man. And it's like, you don't know what is in this stuff and how Mm. long it's been there. You actually have to export that Then it's that like stuff. hazmat suits. It, and it, 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 you're exactly right. It yeah. has to go into a truck. It has to go to a special place. The dirt has to be incinerated. <laughs> Every 
dump truck has well, to yeah, be Well, yeah, we could do a yeah, whole flow. show on, like, what happens to dirt. Like, where, like, yeah. where did that dirt go? Yeah. You know, so the, the really dirty stuff has to be incinerated. Yeah, but, yeah. like, but yours other was dirt. Clean. Yeah, so we were able to, what, give it to another contractor that needed dirt or something, Yeah, right? basically. I mean, there's dirt brokers out there that handle this kind of stuff. Dirt and brokers. They, they are. They Will Ferrell, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> Will Ferrell. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Somebody needs it. It's an expensive, dirty business. Yeah. But lucrative. <laughs> dirt brokers that's the name of a movie <laughs> it totally is how we could go home and write a movie right now called dirt brokers possibly a great, a great business <laughs> to the power needs could you add a power wall tesla batteries it, again i don't think that it does doesn't work a, that a power, power wall functions the same way as a backup it's generator would it would just if it would just bleed it out right yeah i mean it would work for a little while and we actually consider something like that for uh for the fire pump but uh um you know it it took a lot of you know it takes engineering and thought to go into that it's like well before we spin our wheels doing something that may not be necessary let's just find out whether or not we even need the pump first yeah and uh, but it wouldn't work for anything else in the building like as far as trying to get the amps down it would only work as more of a backup system you know an emergency system yeah. for your pump but yeah yeah we didn't we didn't have to go that far yeah, they it measure idea, they though. measure it like right when you turn everything on that's yeah. kind of the it's starting the amps yeah yeah it's it's <laughs> This is it's hard. Making building things is hard. You really smart people and you pay them a real lot of money and it's still really hard. And and did we count in the podcasting equipment? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. Or the podcasting yeah, I hope we got enough uh, outlets up there. Right? Yeah, there will be the new building will have a brand new podcast studio. Our temporary This was a temporary built office studio. Works. Four years ago, <laughs> <laughs> while we were building this, yeah, oh, the new one's gonna be pretty cool. You're gonna have gaskets on your doors for sound, yeah, dual and, and, layer and, tempered and, glass and uh, insulated walls. Yeah, for yeah, sound you're too, gonna right? have really, really heavily insulated and acoustic walls. Acoustic tiles. Your too. T bar is gonna be on rubber isolators. Like, there's gonna be a lot yeah, of cool no, stuff. It's in actually that room. gonna be. It's gonna be a good sounding room. It, mm -hmm. should, it should be nice. really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. it'll, it'll work out well. Wow. So uh, anyway, if anyone's still here. <laughs> We'll see what the retention is on the construction show. I'm, fine, I'm more than happy to do shows that are about, you know, we do shows about, oh, actually, it's not bad. That's not bad for live. That's pretty good. Um, uh, do you want to plug anything? You don't, you don't, you, yeah, you know, I, not real. I mean, we, Litcha Construction, yeah. Litcha construction is our company. I mean, I, I for the most part, you know, we kind of keep a low profile, but yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, we, we work all over. I mean, I, we have, we're licensed in Hawaii and Nevada and Colorado and California. And you're licensed in all the states where you want to like vacation and shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> ah, Hawaii, I mean, it's if a you tough got, gig. You if know, you we'll got to go it, to but... a job site, you might as well visit right. the North Shore while you're there. Why does Adam <laughs> Sandler keep making fucking rom-coms in Hawaii? <laughs> 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 so yeah no yeah. It's, it's good i mean uh I, I like what i do it's uh construction's a it's a lot of work yeah as, as you are finding out and you know yeah. getting your feet wet on one of these jobs here yeah no you, i mean and, and i do all, go off and do other things and you, your people are still there yeah, so we, we still gotta keep I don't, going i don't envy them but some of those guys are badasses man you got good good people well thank you so uh yeah if you're in la and you need a place to keep your car on the west side i will i have a few spaces uh, remaining the waiting list is is growing and we're accepting uh deposits beginning the end of april um just getting all the things at the back end in order it's going to be first come first serve but there's like a hundred people on the waiting list right now for 150 spots so uh matt at the smoking tire.com just easy right now if you want to get uh get on that list um and if you need to build a building i recommend litcha construction yeah Ar you, arcadia california yeah you could find me through matt <laughs> <laughs> yeah and if you're in uh if you're in the playa vista area by all means uh drive down sentinella and drive by my construction site and honk and wave high and uh check out the guys up building walls We're yeah gonna, we you, got walls you can't like, miss it yeah. our walls are like six feet tall right now yeah the walls are up six yeah, feet and your doing, rebar is sticking up probably 40 feet yeah so there it's it's gonna be like we're not we're not, we're above ground now we're, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're building we're, shit for real yeah so you're, we're getting above the fence line finally cool man yeah all right well all right. we got a uh, we have another show tomorrow i believe let me look at my calendar because i'm pretty sure i got a podcast tomorrow do i <laughs> Nope. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, all right. Well, in that case, the Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and ideally something to say. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I'll see y'all later tonight.